Flowers that impel my love Moments that some only hear Loving under a waterfall Christmas that you and I can tell And you could be poor Bring these moments to my mind For you could be poor 
in this land I found the way to feel the beauty of passing days rainbows jewels of a misty Stars that always shone so bright Scattered throughout the lovely night Where true love befell my soul True love that came upon a grass I think that's one.
something stuff like wanting to do something real about the actual like the the phone vibrations and all. It'll be cool though.
I chose Wix for my business.
ka ame o le ka pi na me ka ji prai ai ai ka na ni ono mu ni e ha hom ho o ki pa ma li ni ka u ai ka hol hol ka ame o le ka pi na me ka ji prai ai ai ka na ni ono mu ni e ha hom ho o ki pa ma li ni Kaulanvale oi emol ka ifu mi hana kelo hana kamalini ike ike na ni ho kalau papa eha leyan na ike kukui. Kaulanvale oi emol ka ifu mi hana kelo hana kamalini ike ike na ni ho kalau papa eha leyan na ike kukui. Molga inui ha hina men na kini maka maka o ka aina ho ohai hai ho apo ina eha ile pule no opi ila ni Molga inui ha hina men na kini maka maka o ka aina ho ohai hai ho apo ina eha ile pule no opi ila ni. Oh, oh. 
Na ahahui o na li'i, na li'i mai na kupuna mai E pa'a i na o lelo kaulana e hele a mo i ke ala Hu valea e na ho mana o ana, no na li'i kaulana Ua pau, ua halalako, a koe no na pua Ua pau, ua halalako, a koe no na pua Aloha na ahahui o na li'i, na li'i mai na kupuna mai Aina o lelo kaulana e hele a mo i ke ala Hu valea e nga ho mana o ana no na li i kaulana Hua pau, halala kau, a 
this year's voucher. For Luau this year, I chose the theme the Mani Eha, which means the Heavenly Four. Being Native Hawaiian is a part of our blood, it's an identity. So I really wanted a theme that would reflect that. And so this theme honors four significant Hawaiian figures in Hawaii's history. Their legacy lives on, especially through mele, music, kula, dance, and just all of their contributions. So that helps with our choosing our mele and our kula for the event. We were able to choose songs that these people wrote. So a lot of what you'll see here tonight is um, dancing to songs that they wrote or songs that were written about them. And so that's how we're gonna honor them tonight. Aloha, my name is Kiao Malama Lama. I am currently a senior and I am from Kona, Hawaii. Aloha, my name is Lamokumi Derish. I am a junior and I am from Kaimuki, Oahu. And, and we, we are, are your, your script, script chairs. chairs. Nalani Eha talks about the heavenly four, the pillars of the resurgence of Hawaiian culture and the Hawaiian Renaissance. And when thinking about it, we have collaborated with our kumu, and each of the songs that we've picked in this year's luau kind of exemplifies the significance of each of the members of Melanie Eha. Uh, all of the songs are a living legacy, and that we, students of Huio Hawaii, are responsible for perpetuating that legacy through the hula and through the stories that we tell. And as far as the process goes, uh, we worked on writing the script and worked with our kumu um, in order to understand you know, the meaning of their mele and why it ties into our theme this year. We do a variety of research um, regarding our mele and so just making sure that we're you know, properly representing our culture here in Omaha. Many things are in Hawaiian language so just making sure that we're interpreting everything properly. So that way we are you know, educating our audience um, and then making sure that we are perpetuating stories the way that they are meant to be. Hi, my name is Kandi Respicio. I'm a senior and I'm from Ebba Beach, Hawaii. Hi, I'm Rexton Suzuki. I'm a junior from Honolulu, Hawaii. And, and we, we are, are your entertainment, entertainment chairs. chairs. So we are responsible for choosing the crew. We also choose the finale song and work on quality control within um, all the dances, especially during mass rehearsal where we give notes to every dance and make sure that everyone is ready to go. So in terms of the kumu selection process, Candy and I work closely with Precious. We look at the past dances from the year before to see uh, the quality of the dancers there and also if they have the potential to teach. Uh, we also like to draw a lot upon our underclassmen so that we're able to uh, push on and carry forth the dances that we teach every year so that the luau for the upcoming year will be the same quality and the same greatness as the one we had in the previous year. In terms of preparations for the dance, we do what's called a mass rehearsal and a dress rehearsal. Uh, part of this process is to make sure that the transition from our practices into the luau is more seamless. These are the only two opportunities we really get to participate in the dances as a whole. Hi everyone, I'm Michelle Sui. I'm a senior, I'm from Honolulu, Hawaii. My name is Mandy Augustine, I'm a sophomore and I'm from Honolulu, Hawaii. My name is Christine Yuan, I'm a first year pharmacy student, I'm from Honolulu, Hawaii. My name is Dana Nagagawa, I'm a sophomore and I'm from Kaneohe, Hawaii. And we are your food chairs! This year we're working with Shana, who's from Uncle Glenn's Hawaiian Food. And Shana replied back to me saying that she was super enthusiastic about coming up here and sharing the culture with the people of Omaha, which is something we think is also really important as well. Like as um, a Hui Club, we think that it's important to share our culture and have authentic food. For the most part, our prep, we start on Wednesday, the week of Hula, then we go all the way up until the day of Hula. And chopping of vegetables. We also just have the students working with the chefs, um, which is really important. We get to kind of bond with them throughout that process, which is really nice. We worked very closely with the kumu for all the dances, the teachers, to make sure that the costumes represent the meaning behind their songs. So we chose a lot of red and yellow to represent the traditional colors of Ali'i. And then purple and blue are very reminiscent of Ili'u Kalani. And then when we get to the day before and the day of Luau, we work our hardest where we steam and iron all of the costumes. And we organize all the costumes in the dressing room to make sure that the process of Luau is as seamless as possible. Hi, my name is Mia Nishikawa. I'm a sophomore and I'm from Honolulu, Hawaii. My name is Ryan Okumura. I'm a sophomore as well, and I'm also from Honolulu, Hawaii. <laughs> I'm Mackenzie, I'm a junior, and I'm also from Honolulu, Hawaii. And, and we, we are, are your public, public relations chairs. As your PR chairs, we're in charge of the overall look and aesthetic of the club, as well as promotions such as 
advertisements like our table tents and flyers, Instagram reels that you've probably seen posted on our page as well as the Creighton page, and finally, for the first time, we're making this promotional video to show the behind the scenes of the luau and just all the work that we've put into it. And as for our shirts, we chose the color red to represent royalty, and we had flowers for each member of the Heavenly Four. Something new we did this year was add tote bags and stickers to the merchandise line, and they might look something similar to what you get back home, as it's based off of thank you bags we always get. I'm Kristen Chang, and I'm a sophomore. I'm Mia Haga, and I'm a junior. And, and we're, we're both, both from, from New Valley. Valley. Together, we are your decoration co-chairs. We started our process by ordering flowers from Greenpoint Nursery on the Big Island. We also ordered flowers from um, the Orchid Lake Company, and then we ordered our favors from Big Island Candies. We get the flowers shipped in the Wednesday before Luau, and that night we start their first trim. And after we do that, we cut them a second time, and then we start arranging them into the vases, and we just arrange them, make, making sure they're all nice. I'm William Brazuela. I'm from Grand Island, Nebraska, and I'm a senior. My name is Mason Desig. I'm from Pro City, Hawaii, and I'm a junior. My name is Corbin Al. I'm from Honolulu, Hawaii, and I'm a senior. My name is Riley Usami. I'm from Kailua, Hawaii, and I'm a junior. And we are the, the operations, operations team. team. So operations does a lot of the behind the scenes work. We've ordered the, the staging units, the tables. Like we connected with the like the building managers to make sure that everything is working and we have adequate power and stuff for everything to work. The Friday before the show, we get in there, we set up the 100 tables, all the chairs. Additionally, we also had to be in charge of ordering sounds and lights, which will be mostly operated by Riley. Yeah, like Mason said, um, I will be running the sound and lights during the show, so if there's any problems, you guys can yell at me in the back. Aloha mai kakou, oval o lamaku I am the vice luau chair, and I am a junior from the island of Oahu in Kaimuki. I have learned the importance of the impact that Huio Hawaii has, not just on Creighton University, but for Hawaii altogether. We are responsible, and it is our kuleana and our kaumaha to carry out the legacy of our people. And Precious has taught me the importance of equipping yourselves with the right tools and educating those around us to live this aloha spirit that we are so familiar with back home in order for me to prepare the luau for next year. What that entails, well, I guess you might just have to show up next year. Um, I really hope you come and I'm really excited to see you there. And I would like to leave you with this. Coming into Luau, we welcome you into this space of our culture. We ask you to approach us with not just kindness and being open-minded, but also with the notion that it will become your responsibility now to share this knowledge and share this opportunity that you had with us, with the people around you building this sense of aloha and building a community of Hawaii, not just on the islands, but in the continent as well.
This Ali'i is a significant figure in Hawaiian history. Born on November 16, 1836, he ascended to the throne in 1874 as the ruler of the Hawaiian Kingdom. He was known for his progressive vision and dedication to preserving Hawaiian culture. He advocated for the revitalization of traditional arts, music, and hula, earning him the name the Merry Monarch. He was also the one who illuminated the Iolani Palace, the first Hawaii landmark to be illuminated with electric lights. He embarked on diplomatic missions, strengthening ties with other nations, and promoting Hawaii on the global stage, being recognized by countries like Germany, the United Kingdom, France, and many more. His reign marked a period of cultural resurgence and modernity in the Hawaiian Kingdom. Ladies and gentlemen, Eia Mai o King David Kalakaua. Eo mai kahiapo hope loa. Born on September 2nd, 1838, this ali'i was a prominent leader and the last reigning monarch of the Hawaiian Kingdom. As a talented composer, songwriter, and advocate of the Hawaiian culture, her legacy extends far beyond her political role. She ascended to the throne in 1891 and embarked on a mission to promote the, might, to promote the rights and welfare of her people. Her commitment to preserving Hawaiian traditions and promoting education was evident throughout her reign. Despite the challenges she's faced, her efforts, her efforts left a lasting impact, and she is remembered as a symbol of resilience and the spirit of aloha. Ladies and gentlemen, Eia Mai O Queen Liliu O Kalani. Eia Mai Kamuli, born on January 20th, 1855, and passing away on April 9th, 1877, this Ali'i was an admired figure in Hawaiian history. He was a talented musician, composer, and a member of the Hawaiian royal family. His musical power rest earned him the title of Prince of Song, captivating audiences with his enchanting melodies and heartfelt lyrics. His compositions expressed love for the Hawaiian land and people, and his work played a significant role in preserving and promoting Hawaiian culture. Though his life was tragically cut short at the age of 22, his musical legacy continues to inspire and touch the hearts of many. Ladies and gentlemen, Eia Mai o Prince William Pitt Leleo Hoku. Eia Mai Keali'i Loko Mai Ka'i. Born on January 13, 1851, this Ali'i was a notable figure in Hawaiian history. She is known for her vibrant personality and deep appreciation for Hawaiian culture. She actively promoted the arts and embraced her role as a patroness of hula. Her musical talents and beautiful singing voice earned her admiration, and she composed several songs that is celebrated in Hawaiian traditions. She created and organized Hui Ho'olu a Ho'olala Hui of Kalakaua, a charity of which she was its first president. Organized one week, one week after her brother's ascension to the throne, it took, it took on its name from his motto, Ho'olulu la Hui, to increase, restore, reestablish, and advance the people. Despite her untimely death at the age of 36, she left an enduring legacy as a culture ambassador for the Hawaiian people. Ladies and gentlemen, Eo Mai O Princess Like Like. These four royal siblings of Hawaii are revered and renowned as leaders of their people, musical composers, and stewards of Hawaiian culture and language. Our Ali'i, the Heavenly Four, Nalani Eha. Mai Kumuli. Here is the eldest leading his brothers and sisters. Kalakaua, known as the Merry Monarch, was the eldest of Nalani Eha. His reign was marked by culture revival, the embrace of technology, and diplomatic endeavors to maintain Hawaii's sovereignty. He promoted hula, 
music, and arts while nav navigating changing times and leaving a lasting legacy. As the eldest, Kalakaua was privileged to travel far and wide to study the outside world. From the United States, Great Britain, and Thailand, all the way to Egypt, Kalakaua was the eyes for his community. These worldly travels provided him connections and resources to bring home to the Hawaiian kingdom. There was nothing in his path that could keep him from returning. Every time he, tra every time he traveled, his people knew he was coming back. Mai kahikina a kala'i ha'e ha'e from the rise to the descent of the sun. Kalakaua's many treasures from his journeys flourished. To this day, much of our culture and economic prosperity is owned to his perseverance. So just as he has blessed our ancestors, we wish to extend that blessing to you. That's right. Oh, and here he is now. Kalakaua sailing proudly on the sea. Aloha. Ke, Ke hola ana, ana o Kalakaua. Some of the most famous photographs of our last reigning sovereign are those that depict Queen Liliuokalani sitting intently upon her throne. She embodied the mana, power of her people, and the spirit of aloha from the top of her head to the tips of her toes. She was a leader, a musical talent, and a heart of Hawaii. She was strong in spirit and remained steadfast in her efforts to support the well-being of her people. Following her death, Queen Lili Ookalani's legacy lives on through a trust that supports the education and the needs of Hawaii's youth. While Lili Ookalani was a talented composer of many mele and other, in honor of others, this chant, Lili Ue, was written as, and is danced in honor of her. This oli, chant, was written originally as E Kapi'olani E, in honor of Kapi'olani, wife of Kalaakawa and was composed by hula master Atong Ka'o'o of Wailua. This hula is performed this evening to a recording by Kavai Kapuo Kalani Hiwe. This mele speaks to Lili Kalani's entire person, describing the spark of her eyes and the lift of her feet. Again and again, this kula calls out to Lili'u and seeks to describe the beauty of our beloved Ali'i. 
our beloved queen, Lili Uo Kalani. The crowning glory of Hawaii. Noho nani mai. Sitting beautifully. I, Elili Ue, noho nani mai. Lili Ue, noho nani mai. Koki no e, ki i mili mili. Lili Ue, noho nani mai. Koki no e, ki i mili mili. Komaka. Komaka e, no ve o vare. Kopapa lina e kuku ana. Ko maka e no ve o vare, ko papa lina e kuku ana. Ko poli, ko po ohi vi ani pe ahi, ko poli e na he na he vare. Ko poli, ko po ohi vi ani pe ahi, ko poli e na he na he vare. Ko kuli e nuku moi oe, ko wawa e ka uma i luna. Ko kuli. Ko kuli e nuku moi oe, ko wawa e ka uma i luna. Aina. Aina i a mai ana kapuana. Lili ue no ho nani mai. Aina. Aina i a mai na kapuana. Lili ue no ho nani mai. Hae ala, hae ala, hae ala. You are my home, my refuge, my place of peace, my protection, my Hawaiian melody. Unrequited love was something Le Leo Hoku was very familiar with. Unfortunately, he was very ill and passed away at a very young age. The only thing that kept him alive was his love of music and a young woman. This woman frequented his study and Le Leo Hoku instantly fell in love. Le Leo Hoku was inspired by many things, but he fell in love with Naviqueros, Paniolo, the Hawaiian cowboy, a lot of his music was inspired by the Spaniards visiting and introducing Hawaii to the ways of the cowboy. He was inspired by the archetype and the story that the Western culture told. Where love always welcomed me, with a warm hug, a knowing gaze, a celestial connection where words were not needed. He used his love of music to profess his love to this young woman, but she would never respond. All she did was stare right back at him. No matter how many times he got no response, it never stopped him from trying his best. A place where understanding and acceptance dwelled within a huge beating, humble heart that was in rhythm with mine. Unfortunately, the illness caught up with Lileo Hoku. In his last moments, he composes a letter directly to the young woman. With the last of his strength, he writes a letter telling her of his love for her and how even the love for music and Naviqueros couldn't even compare. His letter was written in Hawaiian, Spanish, and English. After he composed the letter and sent it her way, he passed. Some time goes by and she receives the letter. The contents within it caused her to cry. It turns out she has loved him this whole time too. She just never spoke the same language. His inclusion of Spanish brings the young woman to her knees as the signature of the letter is drenched in her tears. Adios, my beloved. Adios, ke aloha.
Well, it's time for our first raffle prizes. A huge mahalo to those who have supported and provided this year's raffle prizes. Hey, Gabby, what kind of raffle prizes do we have this year? Hmm, let's see. Oh, looks like some local goodies back at home. Hawaiian host macadamia nut chocolate, island princess popcorn, and a couple Aloha collection bags. That sounds pretty good, and those are definitely local favorites. Okay, so we everyone received a ticket at the beginning, and so can you guys wave those tickets in the air for some good luck? <laughs> Back to all what you actually want to hear, it's time to read off some numbers. Our first lucky number is 2498249. Again, 2498249. Is there anyone? <laughs> you can come up to the podium to receive your basket. Now back to our show. <laughs> October 16th of 1875. A day, a day of celebration is upon us. She is here. 
Aloha e Princess Kaiulani. Victoria Kaiulani Kave Q, Iluna Lilo Kaleni Nui Hilapalapa Cleghorn, was born to Princess Like Like and Archibald Cleghorn. When she was born, she represented the continuation of the Kalakaua lineage and hope for Hawaii's future. Following her mother's passing, Princess Kaiulani traveled to England to receive an education. As it was expected, she would one day rule in Hawaii. She was named Crown Princess a couple years later as Queen Liliuokalani ascended the throne. Upon the illegal overthrow of the Hawaiian monarchy, Princess Kaiulani stood for her native home, presenting speeches and seeking to restore the Hawaiian kingdom. She represented the strength of our people, displaying who we are to those around the world. Sadly, Princess Kaiulani passed at the age of 23. While a young Gali'i, she was beloved for her unwavering commitment to the people of Hawaii. Our mele, he noa no kaiulani, written by our aunt, Lili Ukalani, and now sung by Sean Naowo, honors our princess, embraced an aloha of people and a nation she lived and stood for.
Jolie, guess what? I think it's time for another raffle prize. Bring out your tickets. Let's see what this basket has. I cannot see. It oh. oh, looks like some seasoning, more popcorn, chocolate, and more Aloha Collection bags. <laughs> Let's pull out a number. <laughs> okay, so the number is 2497735. Again, 2497735. Congratulations, come up to the podium, please. Music unites us. Brings us together. The power of the
Aloha, everyone. Um, if everyone can please return to their seats in about five minutes, the show will continue from there. Again, uh, will everybody please return to your chairs in the next five minutes? The show will be resuming. Thank you.
July, July 29th, 1879, the year of many changes. Kalal Kowal was a smart man. He knew exactly when to and when to not engage. Yup, see, he was very strategic and understood that there were some battles he just couldn't win. Unfortunately for him, modern technology began to take over on the island of Maui. There was nothing he could do to stop it, but he knew exactly what he could do to fix it. Rather than, rather than fighting back, Kalal Ko embraced the inevitable and signed his name on constructing the very first train in Hawaii. This train station was located in Kahului, from Keolaho all the way to Wailuku. This train was the biggest technological advancement yet. However, he composed a song warning and telling his people they shouldn't fight back, but learn how to use the technology and make it better. Kalako's mission for this song was to give advice to all of Hawaii and telling them that there was nothing they couldn't do. Wait, do you hear that? Well, it's about time, ladies and gentlemen. Yep, the train is slowly approaching. Make sure you got your tickets. All right, everyone, there's no time to waste. Please board the train one by one as we take you on a journey on the island of Maui. All aboard, Ka'a'ahi Kahului. Thank you. 
Shuhei Ohene. Huh? What did you say? Oh, nothing. It's the song. What do you mean, the song? You know, the one that goes, Uhe Uhene. Yeah, no, they have actual lyrics. Do you even know what the song's about? Well, yeah, I know what it's about. But just for our audience's sake, why don't you remind me one more time? Yeah, sure, for the audience. Well, Hawaiian war chant, which is neither a chant nor about war, is rather a princely love song written by Prince Leleo Hoku of Hawaii's last royal family. Leleo Hoku's talent as a composer had many influences from the outside world. Despite not traveling much like his brother, this song describes a boat journey towards an island. This song, this song describes the lengths that you will go for love. Are you willing to travel far? Willing to go any length to be with the one that you love? Or are you going to give up? Uhe uhene. Exactly. From our Pai Aina, our home of islands, let this war chant remind you that even islands apart, love conquers all. Taha uola. We reach out now to our ties in Tahiti. 
The culture of those in Tahiti is also one filled with music. Listen to the beats made from tuerres or and instruments. Like our ancestors in Hawaii, our ancestors in Hawaii, Tahitians have for generations been creators of music and dance that continue to be performed and shared to this day. Through their melodies, we find an adoration of royalty, much aligned with this evening's theme of honoring our ali'i. They sing tunes about the beauty and a manner of spirit of a chiefess, the guardianship and strength of a chief, and most of all, the love they have for leaders. The gracefulness of this evening's aparima, Ariki Vaine Tane by Rex Atirai, expresses the beauty and adoration of our chiefesses and royalty. Through every motion, we embrace a message about the interconnectedness of royalty with their homeland and their family. We, de we dedicate every verse to those that have come before us, our royalty who have paved the way, and the legacies they have left behind. To, to our ancestors, Maurururoa. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
It's time for another raffle prize. And again, mahalo to those who have supported this year's and provided this year's raffle prizes. It's time to read off our numbers. Oh, did I get it? Okay. Who's taking home the gift basket, basket Jolie? The number is 2497727. Again, the number is 2497727. You can come to the podium to pick up your prize. Also, we are happy to present the first set of winners of the silent auction. Here are the results for the first seven winners of the auction. If you hear your name, please see the silent auction table at the end of the show. Our first, pri or our first item was the Na Mokulua, who on table two is, oh, on table two is, oh, on table 82, Oh, 82, <laughs> sorry, 82 is Mike Soap. Congratulations. <laughs> the winner of the Manoa chocolate is Christy Kageyama on table five. Oh, this is a big one. The complimentary two night stay. Okay, the, the winner is from table 10 and is Reagan Medeiros. Congratulations. <laughs> The winner of the Hawaii, Hawaii's Finest Bundle on table 27 is Sean Ulande. I'm sorry if we butcher your name. <laughs> The next one for the Kamehameha Jewelry Men's Bracelet from Table 26 was Donna Beering. On Table 52, the winner of the Kako Collective Bundle is Michaela Kaina. And the last out of our seven winners for the Laha Ole Bundle was Erin Hoffman from Table 67. Heard your name, please see Keiko Na Nakanishi at the silent auction table at the end of the show. And congratulations to our winners. And now, how about we welcome our ladies back onto the stage? Our Otea portion of this evening's Tahitian performance involves rapid hip movements paired with exciting and fast drum beats. Dancing in Otea requires a passion for Tahitian culture as well as strength and stamina. So let's hear those cheers as we travel back to Tahiti.
Yonana, everyone. We are so happy to have you. Every year at our luau, we invite audience members to come join us on stage. And it is one of our favorite and most enjoyed parts of our luau. And so my Tahitian dancers are going to go out into the audience and grab some people. And so please, please say yes. It's bad luck if you say no, first of all. And it's a fun time. We invite all our keiki, our kids, to please join us and learn a little bit of steps. I see that Sebo really wants to come up. We invite so much of you on stage. Please come. Welcome to the stage. All the keiki. We invite our alumni to please join us as well. We would love to see you back on this stage. Everybody come to the front. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. All our keiki, our kupuna. I see my dad, guys. Yorana, everyone. I would also like to specifically call up the social work department in Creighton University. Social work majors, please join us on stage. Our social work majors and our social work students, please join us on stage. I know you're here. I know you're all here. We know. We know you're here, social work. Hi, Dad. Social work, Monica White. I know you're here, girl. Okay, go down. Go down. Go, go behind the red. Okay, everyone, Yorana. Yorana, everyone. Okay, we're gonna follow Harvard Girls in the Red. We're gonna do our first one here. We're gonna do an Ami hands on your hips, and you're gonna have she feet shoulder width apart. Very nice. And you're gonna bend your knees and make a nice circle with your hips. Ready? And one, two, three, four. Yeah, very nice. Very nice. Okay. Next, we're gonna do a demo. We're gonna do a demo now. It's just a snap of the hips. You're gonna do a right and a left. And right. And a left. Let's turn around, show the audience what we're working with. Everybody turn around. Turn around now, turn around. And we're going to do a little right, left, Timo action. You're going to bend your knees. Ready? I'm going to do a right and left. And right and left. Very good, everyone. We can turn back around. Very good. Very good. How was that, everyone? How was that? I think we learned a good amount of stuff, so let's try it with the music. Yeah? We're gonna do a little freestyle. And my audience members, we need to hear you. We gotta hear your screaming, yeah. I know the moms are out there.
fun time. What a beautiful performance. Can we get another round of applause? We are now going to present the second half of winners of the silent auction. Here are the results for the next seven winners. If you hear your name, please see the silent auction table. From table 67 for the Viva Lani blouse and Tahitian pearl earrings, we have Aaron Hoffman. Andrew, on table 97, you got the TNC Surf Yeti and Aloha Pouch. For the other TNC Surf Yeti and the cap, from table 97 was Namini. Amanda McHendry, on table 28, you have the Nohea Gallery Orange Lay. For the Nohea Gallery friendly, from table 10 was Michelle Medeiros. And for the last silent auction item, for the Nohea Gallery Nature Dragon and Bonsai Spam, Royce on table five. I think it's time for our last raffle prize. <laughs> so, our last raffle prize will be a $100 gift card to Yere, which is a popular local brand for Wahine apparel. The lucky number is 4297862. You can pick it up after the show at the silent auction table. Now, how about we return back to the show? Known early on as Ao Ao Kai, this 10-acre property was once home to our Ali'i, chiefs and chiefesses. Amongst the thousands of acres inherited by Princess Ruth Ke'eliko Lani, this estate became known as a regal home and was held dearly in the hearts of our Ali'i. Princess Like Like lived there with her husband and referred to the state as Aina Ho or Kulan. In Aina Ho, one could listen to the melodies of the birds and gentle breeze that blew through the fronds of the coconut trees. Through this state, one could watch the water flow in the stream of Puokeho as it traveled toward and into the sea. Aina Ho was adorned in Lokelani, roses that were not only admirable in sight, but left a sweet scent hanging in the air. Like Like's husband, Princess Like Like's husband, Alchbar Claycorn, was passionate about plant life and filled the estate with hundreds of plants. From a few hundred coconut trees and a variety of mango trees to plants from all around the world, Aina Ho was, a tru was truly a garden and home fit for royalty. A place so beautiful that Mele, songs, would be written about it. A place so beloved that our people will go on to sing and dance about it for generations. Performed this evening by Elijah Isaac, 
This is a mele of aloha composed by Princess Like Like for her home. As Like Like expresses her aloha for her home in Ainahau, we also present aloha to the home and community we have cultivated here in Omaha. And so, this evening, in their final mele together, our seniors present to you Ainahau. Here at the Huyo Hawaii Luau, we have a tradition that we have been doing at every single one of them. That's right, it's time for the haka. While the haka is not a part of Hawaiian culture, the, Hui's, the member of Huizo Hawaii want to pay tribute and respect for our oceanic brothers and sisters. The haka, a traditional Maori dance from New Zealand, is a powerful and culturally rich expression that embodies the fusion of physical prowess, mental focus, and spiritual death. Rooted in the warrior traditions of the Maori people, the haka serves as a symbol of determination and success. As our dancers engage in the haka, they not only showcase their physical strength, but also channel their mental and spiritual energies. This dance is a dynamic blend of rhythmic movements, vocal chants, and facial expressions, reflecting the holistic approach to life embraced by the Maori. It's more than just a performance. It's a connection between the past, present, and future. In this performance, the warriors, our dancers, metaphorically climb the mountain, symbolizing the arduous journey towards success. The ascent becomes a pathway to wisdom, emphasizing the importance of overcoming challenges and obstacles in the pursuit of knowledge and growth. The haka is not just a dance. It's a profound journey of self-discovery and empowerment. Hi, 
Ringo! Poca Rongo! Chiari te! Chiari te! Please hold hands with the person next to you and join us in singing a local favorite, Malama Mau Hawaii. This mele expresses our aloha to the land, people, and stories of Hawaii. In singing, we express our kuleana, our responsibility to take care of Hawaii and Polynesia as stewards of their future. Let us come together now in honor of those who came before us and let us celebrate the foundations they have laid for us so that we may endure into the future. Mahalo nui loa. Thank you very much for joining us today to celebrate Creighton University's annual luau. We hope you had a wonderful time and enjoyed the good food, music, and dance that we have shared with you. We appreciate all of your support and look forward to seeing you all next year. Our luau chair, Precious, would now like to come up and say a few closing remarks. Aloha, hiahi 
Kikako. My name is Precious Nakamoto, and I've had the honor and privilege of being the Luau Chair this year. I would like to personally thank you all for coming tonight um, to share this special event with us. I hope you enjoyed the show and were able to learn more about our home, Hawaii, and its culture, specifically about the royal members of Nalani Eha. Before the night ends, I would like to give a couple of shout outs to the people who helped to make this event possible. I would like to thank Creighton University, the Rec and Wellness team, reservations, and the building support team for allowing us to utilize this space and for helping us to prepare for this event. Mahalo to our chef, Shanna, and her ohana who flew in earlier this week to prepare the Ono food that you had earlier this evening. They have been working hard to prepare some local Hawaii favorites all week, and we are so honored to play a part in sharing the recipes of Uncle Glenn here in Omaha. Next, I would like to thank the members of Alpha Phi Omega and our members of Huio Hawaii for volunteering for the different committees throughout this week. They have all worked extremely hard, and we truly wouldn't be able to put this event on without them. Mahalo to all of the Hui Ohana who have donated to our country store and to the Ohana who are able to fly up and donate their time as well. I want to give a huge shout out to all of our dancers who absolutely killed it tonight. Our dancers have been practicing every week since September to put on this amazing show. And I just wanted to say that I'm so proud of each and every one of you. And I'm so blessed to be able to share the stage one last time with you all. Finally, I would like to give a special shout out to my Luau exec team for continuing to work with me all year long. They are truly the magic behind this show and I would like to take the time to recognize each of them. Our entertainment chairs, Candy and Rexton and... <laughs> and all of the kumus who taught the dances we performed tonight. Our script team, Kiao and Lama. Our MCs, Gabby and Jolie, and all of our wonderful actors. Our costumes chairs, Tristan, Autumn, Alyssa, and Jada. Our PR team, Mia Nishikawa, Kenzie, and Ryder. Our decorations chairs, who put together our beautiful centerpieces, stage, and photo booth, Mia Haga and Kristen. and our operations team who have worked extremely hard to set up this entire event space and to work out all, all the fine details. Corbin, Will, Mason, and Riley. I would also like to thank both Kavena Abrego and Lama Maderis who split time working as my vice chairs this year. Good luck to Lama as he becomes the chair next year. Once again, thank you all for coming and making this night such a huge success. We appreciate all of the support that we have received this year, and we hope to see you again next year. Aloha and ahui ho. For our last announcements, before you leave, please make sure to take a look around your seats and pick up any trash that you see. Also, while they are beautiful, please do not take home our vases. You are, however, welcome to take home the flowers. Finally, please get home safely and enjoy the rest of your evening. Ahui ho until we meet again.